Since steamrolling onto the Sega Mega Drive in 1991, Sonic the Hedgehog has arguably had one too many video games. But have you ever wondered which of those games caused him to cook his friends in a frying pan, or better yet, for Tails to get chased by a demented witch in a minecart? These are the 10 most obscure Sonic the Hedgehog video games. Coming in at number 10, it's Sonic the Hedgehog Triple Trouble. Now, Sonic the Hedgehog Triple Trouble was made by the Aspect Entertainment Company, who were also responsible for previous games on the Sega Master System and Sega Game Gear, including the original Sonic the Hedgehog 2 and everyone's favourite Sonic Chaos. Triple Trouble was different from its predecessors in that it was the first to be only released on the Sega Game Gear, and it had this kind of pseudo 3D effect kind of vibe going on, where it wasn't quite a 2D Sonic game, it was trying to do way too much with the Master System hardware. As a result of this pseudo 3D look, the graphics are what I would call impressive, but brought the frame rates down to James's PC levels of the playability. Apart from being really tough on the graphics, this game is anything but exceptional. It does have one claim to fame though, way before Rouge the Cleavage Bat came to prominence. This was the debut of Fang the Sniper. Fang the Sniper was, uh, for all intents and purposes, a treasure hunter who, during the ensuing chaos, if you pardon the pun, went to steal the Chaos Emeralds, and you know the story from there, it's typical Sonic lore stuff. Coming in at number 9, it's Sonic Labyrinth. Now if you imagine Sonic Labyrinth as being like a giant 3D pinball table, but you imagine that Sonic is like curled up into a ball um, and he can't stand up. Also, Dr. Robotnik has stolen his speed shoes and replaced them with slow shoes, uh, you know, because reasons. So yeah, it's a little bit inexplicable really, it doesn't really make a lot of sense to anybody. You know, the one thing Sonic the Hedgehog is good at is pinball mechanics, and this game kind of takes all the good things about those pinball mechanics and takes them away. It's very slow paced, the levels are very repetitive, uh, you know, there's, no, there's not a lot of exciting going on there. It's quite a good little arcade game if you ever get a chance to play it, but Sonic Labyrinth, definitely not one of the most well-known Sonic games out there. Coming in at number 8, it's Tales on the Music Maker, which is a edutainment kind of game for the Sega Pico, for anyone who remembers the Sega Pico, that is obscure in and of itself. Uh, but Son uh, t sorry, Tales Music Maker, uh, yeah, it's basically an education game, it's for kids, it teaches them how to do things like scale and pitch and tempo and kind of the basic concepts of music. But you can also make your own little songs in the game, and I just want to share this masterpiece with you, this is a piece that I made earlier. Coming in at number 7, it's Tails Sky Patrol, which is a rather obscure little game for the Sega Game Gear. Again, uh, this one uh, features Tails on his own without Sonic the Hedgehog, in what can only be described as a prequel to Sonic the Hedgehog 1 and 2. The basic concept of this one is that Tails is being chased across, you know, the land of whatever Sonic the Hedgehog lives in, Mobius maybe. So Tails is being chased by a demented witch called Wendy Witchcart. Why is she called Wendy Witchcart? That's a good point, because uh, she rides around in a, in a, like a mine cart kind of thing. Because of course she does. That's the kind of the pun, you know, Wendy Witchcart. It's a little bit inexplicable, really. Uh, you know, I don't know why she's got this inexplicable obsession with mine carts. I mean, it would be a lot easier to, to chase Tails and other... Ch Tails can fly as well, by the way. That's kind of Tails' gimmick in the Sonic series. Um, but yeah, again, it's just an odd game. Uh, it takes place in like Emerald Hill Zone from Sonic 2, but it's supposed to be a prequel to Sonic 2. Uh, Sonic Tails hasn't met Sonic yet in this game. Uh, it's just very, again, slow, clunky, just doesn't really feel like a Sonic game. The only review I can find on the entire internet from this game comes from a Japanese publication called uh, Fami Famicom Tushin, and they gave it 22 out of 40. And nobody else reviewed it. Ever. Coming in at number 6, and this is an obscure one, it's Sonic Athletics. Now Sonic Athletics is an arcade game, and it can only be found in one place, and that's the Sega Joyopolis in Tokyo. I think it might still be there, it's been quite a few years since I did my research on this one. But Sonic Athletics is basically a game where you uh, run on a treadmill, and the person who runs the fastest obviously wins. So it's kind of like a racing game, but you actually have to run to race. Uh, it seems like kind of counterintuitive, like I like the idea of, you know, mixing exercise with video games, but it seems counterintuitive because isn't the idea of exercise to kind of pace yourself and not to overdo it and burn out? And it seems like in this game, if you're trying to rush to the end, you're just going to knacker yourself, but I would, I'd be dead. 
dead, actually dead. Coming in at number five, it's Sonic Drift. Now, Sonic Drift is weird because it's another Game Gear game, but this one was released exclusively in Japan. It had a sequel called Sonic Drift 2, which was released in America and Europe. But it was kind of strange because people in America and Europe got Sonic Drift 2 and they'd never seen Sonic Drift. So that game was kind of like, what happened to the first version? I can't find it anywhere. It was only released in Japan. Very odd. It does have a few notable uh, things about it though, first one being it's yet another game on this list that features everyone's favourite Fang the Sniper, but it's also noteworthy because it was the first ever game in the Sonic franchise to feature Metal Sonic as a playable character. Coming in at number 4, it's Sonic Shuffle. Now, Sonic Shuffle was a game for the Sega Dreamcast, which basically was like a Mario Party style of game. Sonic and his friends, Tails, Amy and all, the, all your favourites, Knuckles, went through this kind of weird interdimensional wormhole and found themselves basically in Mario Party land. The basic principle is you're all lined up on the board, you roll the dice, you move so many steps and depending on where you land, this is, you know, unlocks a mini game for you to play with your friends. One example of one of these mini games is this one where you're basically cooking all of your friends in a frying pan, which even for the Sonic series is a little bit strange. Coming in at number three, it's another Sonic arcade game. It's Sonic the Fighters. Now, Sonic the Fighters is an odd one. It's basically Virtua Fighter, but with Sonic characters. I think it was even built in the Virtua Fighter engine. It was again primarily released in Japan, even though they did make an English port of the game, although the English port was a little bit weird because the, it wasn't translated very well, Dr. Robotnik was spelled in a weird way, it was just very odd. It is the fourth entry on this list to feature Fang the Sniper, if I'm counting correctly, which is, you know, it's a phenomenal showing. Basically, if, if, the, if your Sonic game has got Fang the Sniper in it, it's dead. It's also noteworthy for being the only game in the series to feature Yuji Naka, who is the creator of Sonic the Hedgehog, as a playable character in the game. I think that might have been revenge by Yu Suzuki for Naka crashing one of his Ferraris. Coming in at number two, it's Sonic Schoolhouse. Now, Sonic Schoolhouse was another edutainment game. This one was, believe it or not, released on PC for Windows 95. It teaches kids how to do things like read and write, do maths, you know, the general thing. It's kind of got this weird pseudo 3D kind of almost Wolfenstein-esque graphics vibe, I would say. It's got various educational mini games in there, like this one where you go around collecting rings, and then this other one where you climb on board a school bus and just watch videos of animals for some reason. The one thing that makes it quite notable is that it uses assets from the cancelled Sonic Extreme project. Sonic Extreme was supposed to be the Sega Saturn's next Sonic game that never happened. And finally, coming in at number one on this list, it's Waku Waku Sonic Patrol Car. Now, what can I say about Waku Waku Sonic Patrol Car? It's a thing, and it exists. Basically, it's like a small arcade machine that appeared in shopping malls all across Japan in the early 1990s. Apparently, there's even still a few left roaming around the abandoned malls of Japan. Uh, basically, the gameplay of this, it's very little is known just because of just how quirky and Japanese this is. It never came to, to America, even though they did again do an English translation. But the basic principle of Waku Waku Sonic Patrol Car is that Sonic is chasing Dr. Robotnik for what can only be described as the minor traffic violation of throwing bombs into oncoming traffic. It is notable for one thing though, it was the very first Sonic the Hedgehog game to feature the voice of, of Dr. Robotnik, in Japan at least, who is still doing the voice of Robotnik to this very day. And that's the game front list of the top 10 most obscure Sonic the Hedgehog video games. What do you think? Do you agree? Have you got maybe some more obscure games that you remember from your childhood? Let us know down in the comments below. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next one.